everybody. Welcome back. I'm uh, getting used to doing live streams again. I'm so happy to see everybody. Uh, we have some pretty good stories here today. I'm going to pick up on some of the stories that I didn't cover over the weekend for Comic-Con. Um, and they're pretty good. They're pretty good. Uh, they didn't really have enough information to warrant their own standalone videos, but I think they're worth talking about. And I'm sorry that this was delayed, um, but we got that Avengers 5 news with Destin Daniel Cretton getting the directing nod, and I made a standalone video for that. Uh, and I have other videos I'll be doing this week, but I'm really committed to doing live streams, getting them back on track. Uh, live streams are today. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to be doing a live stream. And then I'll also be having a live stream on Thursday afternoon where not only can anyone watch, but anyone can comment. We're going to give Super Chats uh, a try. Uh, you know, just, you know, shake it up and, and have different opportunities. And also, if you're joining, if you're a BTT Movie Club member, uh, we're doing a watch along this Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be finally watching Rear Window together. I'm very, very excited about that. So that's, we got a lot of live streams this week. A lot of live streams. We'll be spending a lot of time with you guys. Well, I always do, but live. We'll be doing some stuff live. So Bruce Wayne, oh, it's so nice that Bruce Wayne in his busy schedule would uh, become a member. Hey, Bruce Wayne. Uh, if you join during a live stream, I will give you a shout out. Hey, Alan Hill, welcome back. Let's see here. Jorge uh, has a, 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 used one of his, uh, you get one super comment a month if you're a member. So Jorge used his to wish me to ask if I was having an amazing day. That's so nice of you. Uh, let's say it's Zante. Thank you. Thank you. Working very hard on the hair. I appreciate that. And Theos, uh, welcome. Oh, look, and Jerry gifted 10 Beyond the Trailer memberships. That's so kind of you. You know, uh, some of you have been, you know, gifting memberships. Somebody started it um, like uh, about a month or so ago, gifting memberships to others. And, you know, I think that was such a generous thing to do. And it's caught on. And uh, someone did it the last live stream, and now um, uh, Jerry's doing it today. Jerry is an awesome member of the BTT community. Jerry's also a super follower on Twitter. Um, so, uh, Jerry, that's really sweet. Oh, look at Zister. Zister gifted 50 Beyond the Trailer memberships. You guys are so kind. Uh, so I'm definitely going to make sure I do the streams so people who get the gift uh, can, can enjoy... Um, and can, 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 can use that gift. Zister, also a longtime BTT member, incredibly kind person, uh, and, I, and, you know, again, a global community, which is so nice. Uh, it's so great to have everybody here. Uh, that was very kind of both of you, Jerry and Zister. Uh, okay, so uh, it's so nice to see everybody. Let's get to uh, the stories of the day. These are some very good stories. Oh, Elliot, just one second. Elliot says, me and my family are COVID positive. I got it last week from work and I got my results yesterday. We're doing fine, just mild symptoms. Elliot, I'm so happy that you and your family are okay and that you're taking care of yourselves. I'm glad we can keep you company right now. So the way a live stream works, uh, for those of you who are not familiar, yeah, Zister, you, you know, Zister and Jerry, really, you guys are both wonderful. Uh, so the way a live stream works is that we'll do the three, st oh, let's see here. Zister says you deserve it. Um, you're amazing. Your content get me, got, got me through a lot of stuff. Ah, oh, Zister, you know, I have to tell you that I mean so much to hear that from some of you that I, you know, I can help you get through some rough times. And I have to tell you, you guys do the same thing for me. When I'm having a rough time and I, you know, I'm a little bit uh, down in the dumps, whenever I'm interacting with you guys, it just lifts my spirit so much. So uh, it's a two-way street. Hey, Mando's Ace, welcome. Desert Knight, I don't understand what's happening here with On Set. Uh, I think I turned on uh, Super Chats and uh, stickers, so is that what that is? Hmm, interesting. I like it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, and then Calvin's on the night train to Vienna. That's pretty awesome. That's very picturesque. All right, so the way live streams work. The way live streams work is that we'll do the three stories of the day, and then for the final 10 minutes of the stream, you can ask me anything that you would like, and maybe I'll answer, but you know, you, you shoot your shot. And then I'll do shout outs at the very end before I log off. So get comfortable. All right, live stream time, baby. All right, so the first story of the day, hold on, boop. All right, the gray man. Now the gray man is supposedly moving forward at Netflix quite aggressively. 
I reviewed the movie. I thought it was only medium. Uh, in fact, in my coverage of the director for uh, the new Avengers movie, uh, I was like, maybe the reason that the Russo brothers didn't get it is that Kevin Feige watched The Gray Man. <laughs> Which, you know, I mean, it was fine, but I mean, it wasn't like, give these guys another job fine. Uh, but Netflix has decided to give them another job. Mika, you're right, because, you know, I talked about this in my video. They didn't mention any viewership numbers for The Gray Man. They did an old school Hollywood trick where they said, sequel, not just a sequel. Oh, hey, Paul, that's very nice of you. I think Paul's using super chats there. You can, uh, you can, you can donate just a little bit of money of your, of your choosing. Hey, Gavin Dean. So The Gray Man's getting not only a sequel with Mr. Ryan Gosling, but a spinoff which is going to be written by the guys who wrote Deadpool. And they said that's going to be like a hard R. They're going for it, man. They're going for it. But that's right. As Mika pointed out, they said they were going to make another Bright movie. Remember that was that David Ayer, uh, fairies and trolls, police officers thing? Never happened. So I'm, I think there might be a chance they're just saying all this to make sure you keep watching The Gray Man for the next few weeks, right? They spent a lot of money on it. I believe it's actually the most expensive Netflix movie ever made. So they're like... We got to make sure people watch this. I mean, when Red Notice came out, they said that it was breaking viewership records in the first 24 hours, first 48 hours. I have not seen anything like that for The Gray Man. So that makes me a little suspicious. But I got to tell you, that Gray Man picture right there with Ryan Gosling there is so awesome. Uh, look at Zonde using Super Chats. Hey, Juan, welcome. Juan Carlos. Um, but I'm like, that is a very nice graphic with the gray and the red suit kind of like bleeding into the gray. I'm like, that's pretty sweet. So I'm like, I don't know, that graphic makes me feel pretty good about the whole thing. Although they did pin it on Mr. Ryan Gosling, who, as we've discussed many times, just does not have a big audience. <laughs> so I don't know if maybe he was the best person to, to, to do that. So we'll see what uh, Pastor Madeline says. I didn't even finish it. Should I, should I finish the movie? That's funny, Pastor Madeline. Maybe Netflix has those numbers and they're like, we gotta get people to at least finish it. Tell them we're making a sequel. So I love Ryan Gosling. That's right, Zister. Ryan Gosling typically grosses about $11 million his opening weekend. But you know, he has Barbie coming up. I mean, Kevin Feige was talking a lot of great things about Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling right now has been promoting the gray man and he's been talking up Barbie, but he also said he'd like to be Ghost Rider. So somebody asked Kevin Feige about that at Comic-Con backstage and Kevin Feige was like, oh, I love Ryan Gosling. He dresses up as Ken on Venice Beach and gets more publicity than most movies opening that weekend. And I'm like, oh, I love it. I love the love between them. But I, I mean, I'd be like, don't get carried away, Kevin Feige. Uh, I mean, people, I mean, we've seen this before. Just because somebody wants to click on you or you do well in the tabloids doesn't mean they actually want to pay to watch you in a movie theater. Um, oh, hey, Alex. Alex, that's very generous of you, Alex. Alex is using the stickers. This is a new experience for all of us, so uh, we're going to have fun with it. Uh, that is a great sticker choice, and I appreciate the, um, the donation. That's very kind of you. But, yeah, I don't want to give any spoilers for The Gray Man, so, uh, you know, let's just say... Chris Evans hasn't been included in any of these discussions. Um, but anybody here watch a Gray Man sequel? I mean, I gotta tell ya. I mean, I'd watch it. I don't know. I wouldn't. I mean, I wouldn't be particularly excited about it. But I think it would get. I mean, I'd have to see who they cast else in the movie. To be honest with you. Yeah, Regé Jean Page was awful. I thought it was crazy that the Russo brothers were like, he should be the next Bond. And in the comments on Twitter, everybody in the replies was like, don't even try that. He was awful in The Gray Man. I think that they single-handedly killed Roger Jean Page's career. So that's pretty, that's pretty rough right there. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, I don't know. Let's see what they decide to do. I don't, I, all I want to say is, I don't think, and Stella didn't finish it either. That's interesting. I wouldn't count on them actually making any of this Gray Man stuff. I think it's just to get hype about the project and to make people write about it because it doesn't have an end credit scene. It doesn't, it's, no, I don't think, it, it's like a popular book series, but it's not like a comic book. So the discussion just, and also it's a movie, you know, even though Netflix does drop stuff, um, you know, as a full season anyway, but there's nothing to talk about. Hey, Callum. Oh, look at that cute sticker. You guys are finding some adorable stickers. Oh, that's adorable. Looks like Baby Groot right there. 
But yeah, so I mean, I just think that this is a ploy to get people talking about it and keep people interested in it and get another wave of viewership. Um, but I think it has till the Sandman hits. Let's see. Let's see. I'll be curious to see where it rates and all most the all-time most watched Netflix movies. Because Extraction and Red Notice all got up there. So where will the gray man be? That I think is really, really important. Oh, hey Gavin Dean, you guys are finding some really cute movie stickers. I like that, it's like a rainbow clapper. I love it. All right, so that's the first story of the day, all right? Uh, so that's the gray man. Uh, Spiderhead was actually pretty good, so I agree. Oh, hey, thanks, present progressive. That's a cute one too. Oh, this is so cute. Juan, I, well, Juan Carlos, I thought you were a member before. You lost your other account and have to start over. Oh no, you have to work your, Usually if you rejoin, you still get your badge that you left off with. But if you lose your account somehow, yes, you do have to start from the beginning. I'm sorry. All right, so uh, Trisha watched The Black Phone today. Right, Trisha? The Black Phone is like a really great surprise. Again, I watched it twice last week. I thought it was so good, I watched it by myself. And then my, I told my parents about it, and I was like, I'll watch it again with you. And so I did, and we had a great time. All right, my dad didn't even fall asleep. That's how good the movie is. All right. Hey, mate. I like seeing your picture. I like seeing pictures as the emojis. These emojis are adorable, these emoji stickers. They really, YouTube really did a nice job with this. All right, so let's get to the second story of the day. Second story of the day. Boop. All right, so I am fascinated to find out if Avatar The Last Airbender is still a big brand. I think they waited, me thinks they waited a bit too long to, uh, to, to, to do this. They, of course, were supposed to do a live action. Well, first they had a live action movie with M. Night. Horrible. Everybody thought it was a joke. It just really killed the series. Then luckily they brought in Korra, the, La Korra, the, you know, the legend of Korra, which was phenomenal. I thought that was really good. Unfortunately, um, Netflix ended up putting it exclusively on digital, which was a detriment at that time. You know, today you want to be on digital. But that, you know, Cora was one of the first uh, really representative LGBT characters, and Nickelodeon didn't know quite how to handle it. So that became kind of controversial towards the end there. Uh, then they were supposed to do a live action retelling of the first series on Netflix, which is still happening apparently. But the creators didn't like what Netflix was doing, so they left, and Netflix is like, fine, we'll make it without you. Uh, also, by the way, interestingly, Netflix still has distribution rights on other Avatar things, so they're privy to what Avatar Studios is doing, I found out. So they're still, you know, they're still in bed together, even though they really want to be separated. All right, so, uh, so there's that. And then Avatar Studios announced that they were going to come back. Hey, the chosen girl. That's adorable. Ah, oh, hey, Max Rollo. I like seeing where you guys are based on your currency. Uh, John Lee brings up a good point about the gray man, the Danush. That's true. Danush would be great. Ah, oh, Thomas, thanks for joining BTT Movie Club. But so I think that, you know, Avatar Studios came along and Avatar Studios was like, okay, well, we're going to do a whole bunch of stuff. And because, and, and, of course, Paramount Plus is like a big streaming service. And so I think that everybody was like, when are you going to use one of your biggest brands? And that's Avatar The Last Airbender. Although, of course, now Disney's bringing back Avatar. And I think that it's too much Avatar. And people are like, Avatar. And then you're like, which one? And then people have to clarify. So that's kind of ridiculous. Although Avatar Studios ain't backing down because it's the name of their company. Now, then, even though this is supposed to be for Paramount+, Plus, these Avatar movies are going to theaters. That's aggressive. Now, on the one hand, I love the idea of an adult action animated series in, coming out from the West, coming out from Hollywood. And we've seen some anime do quite well in theaters, particularly during the pandemic when there was a little less competition. So, but here's the thing. I think that, I mean, it didn't trend. They didn't, they weren't at Comic-Con really, but then they had an announcement uh, with one of the voice talents. She made a video on Twitter, but uh, Janet Varney, I think the name is. But I think like it didn't trend, even though she announced that it was going to be the first movie would be about Aang. Uh, and the rumor is, is it'll be about adult Aang and friends, which is like really exciting. I'm like, I will be there a thousand percent. But I think it's just been a very, very long time. So I'm curious. Yeah, Barbie, you got a ton of retweets. Uh, I think certainly the fandom noticed, but it wasn't as a big, you know, it wasn't able to be like top 10. And when Korra used to air, this was a long time ago, when The Legend of Korra would air, it would trend top 10 
all the time. It was a really, really big deal. It was an incredible show. This used to be like as big as the boys. Like it was really, really a big deal. And so I'm curious to see if they can bring the brand back. It's been so long, but I, I am excited um, about the idea of like an adult animated movie. With, so it's action, action oriented. I mean, I think that could open up a door to all the other studios doing that because it's much more cost effective. But what do you guys think? Um, are you still like really into Avatar? Is anyone here not in, anyone not familiar with Avatar? I guess is the probably the easier way to go. See, mommy needs a nap. Hadn't even heard it was announced. Oh, it's trending on TikTok. Oh, that's interesting, Trisha. Looking at the different types of people who are on each social media service. That's fascinating. See, a few people aren't familiar with the property, and it's so much work for you to get into it. Ah, I feel bad, but I got to tell you. It's worth it. It's really, really good. Uh, I'm, now I feel like a Clone Wars fan. Watch all four seasons. And you're going to be like, what now? Four seasons? Are you kidding me with this? And they're each like, what, 30, you know, 30, couple. There are a lot of episodes. Well, it's only three seasons, Peyton, but it's a lot of episodes. Hey, Orr, welcome. Uh, you know, it's a lot. But it's so good. You should watch it. <laughs> I watched all the Sopranos during the uh, pandemic, and I had a great time, actually. I really went through it fast. So if you're looking for something to watch, I would watch Avatar, to be honest with you. Uh, Avatar, it's, uh, are they on Paramount Plus, I think? I'm rusty on my Avatar knowledge. Avatar The Last Airbender, to be honest with you. I'm rusty on it. Uh, I like the original characters quite a bit, but um, my favorite one was, what was her name? She was the Earthbender. And her daughter became the police tong, I think, right? She was my favorite. Just because she also had the coolest. Toph, Toph, I was close, Toph. She had the coolest powers too, because she, uh, metal is a variation on earth. So she could metal bend, she could earth bend and metal bend. And I was like, that's the power I'd want, like for sure. You know, usually I'm all into telekinesis, as you know, but in Avatar, you have to pick an element, earth, wind, or fire. And I was like, or earth, air, and fire in this case, or, uh, or water. And I was like, earth all the way, baby. What she managed to do with earth bending was like the most incredible thing I've ever seen. Uh, that's right, she was a little like Magneto. It's very cool. It's very, very cool. Uh, An amazing representation. You're right, I'd be curious to see who the voice cast is going to be on this. I'm excited. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I'm very rusty. I would have to really, really do a lot of research to get back in on this. Uh, and I will, because I'm definitely going to be covering it because it's that hot a property. But man, it's like you got to pick and choose what you're covering these days. Some of you have been like, side note, some of you have been like, why are you coming, covering House of the Dragon? Or why aren't you covering uh, the Rings of Power? Well, it all depends a little bit on the approach that the, street, that the, the studios take. That's important to pay attention to. Uh, you know, how they, you know, how they uh, react to coverage. Uh, and then also, you know, what is the most popular? What do I think I can add the most to the conversation on? I'm definitely going to review both of those shows, but I got to tell you, I don't see a lot of heat on either one of them. There's a lot of heat on social media, but there's not a lot of heat uh, like on videos. So I'm trying really, really hard to, you know, figure that out. Sir Charles is like, Peacemaker broke HBO Max records for an original show. Yeah, but what are HBO Max records? They can't get a single show into the top 10 on Nielsen. I'm, I'm waiting. I am going to have a little party on Movie Math when HBO Max gets a show in the top 10. I really hope Westworld gets in there. It should be showing up soon on Nielsen because uh, they're about a month behind. But like Westworld's the best it's ever been. But it had two horrible seasons in the middle. So I think a lot of people are like, eh, I don't, you know, I think they're not watching. Like, you know, like, and, and like, so what do people watch on HBO Max? You know, like, I think um, we, and I don't, I don't even know if Euphoria would count because the word is, is that if it's not an HBO Max original, it doesn't count. It's an HBO show, which is garbage. It, that's garbage if that's the case. Uh, so we have to find out. We have to find out if it has to be an HBO Max original because then that's just nuts. And that also would lower the bar even more for the performance, you know, numbers for Peacemaker because it would have to be the number one HBO Max original. I don't even know how it, you know, like White Lotus, Euphoria, those are, those are not HBO Max originals. Um, Hacks is, though. Hacks is only on HBO. Hacks and Flight Attendant. <laughs> Harley Quinn. 
you know, but we'll see. This is crazy market, man, crazy. Uh, I think that, you know, HBO's uh, things being divided into HBO Max and HBO is like not good for them. Uh, Julia was an HBO Max original, as Mika just wrote, but uh, no, winning time is HBO. Oh, Emiliano says the Gray Man numbers are out. Link? Link, 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 let me see. Maybe they heard everybody saying like, what are the numbers? Mm -hmm. I don't see any. I don't see any numbers. You gotta give me a link, man. All right. So anyway, I'm very excited about this movie. Uh, the ang I, I'm most excited for what it's gonna possibly do for animation for adults and, and the multiplex, uh, but let's see what happens. I mean, look how good What If is. What if What If for Marvel, hey George, what if What If for Marvel could do like, like a movie? Wouldn't that be incredible? Oh, there it is. But I need a link. 88.5 million hours in the first three days. But like where is, okay, that's what it is. Hold on. Hold on, wait a minute. I think this is like, the list is for the first 28 days, I think. Yeah, 28 days, so we gotta wait. We gotta wait 28 days. That's convenient. All right. In 28 days, we'll know where it ranks on the all-time list. Okay. Uh, well, also, when we finally get to Nielsen and stuff, we'll get a good idea of the numbers there, too. You know, we, ha we still have to find out about the Nielsen, Nielsen charts and the Netflix charts. So you'll get some Gray Man answers this coming week, actually, I think you should. Um, but Nielsen is, we're going to have to wait about a month. Uh, it's tough, but we'll wait. We'll wait to get the right answer. All right, so that's the second story of the day. The third, oh, fifth, de fifth biggest debut for a Netflix film. Hmm, interesting. The fifth for the most expensive? That's a, a wee bit embarrassing. It's, I'm telling you, it's, it's Ryan Gosling. And I love Ryan Gosling. Hey, Newbot Gaming. Uh, I love Ryan Gosling, but uh, I love him, but that doesn't mean I can't embrace the truth. All right, so third story of the day. Ready? Boom, baby. Boom, baby. Uh, I thought Walking Dead was, I thought The Walking Dead was dead. I was like, it's over. The Walking Dead, you know, they're just running on fumes. But they actually came up with a really good idea at Comic-Con that I think could actually maybe if, keep them alive a little bit longer. And that is uh, Denai Guerrera and Andrew Lincoln showed up as a surprise, surprise! And their characters are getting a spin-off. Rick Grimes and I'm, how do you pronounce it? Is it Michonne? Uh, you know, her very cool samurai sword-wielding character. Uh, they are a couple. Uh, she adopted his daughter, and they had a son together. You can see there, like, what a cool family. Uh, and uh, I got it correct. Ah, yay, Michonne. Okay, excellent. Uh, Alex, this shirt is from Xien. This is a, a comic book print shirt from uh, Xien which is fast fashion, which I get because I want to have different shirts all the time when I'm on the air. Uh, so let's see here. So I think that this is a great idea. I think that people, well, that's the thing, Brendan. Everyone thought Rick was dead, but apparently he's not dead. And uh, the show is going to be Michonne going to look for him uh, to reunite their family. I mean, that sounds so great. And, how, and that's great flipping it. How often is it the guy going in search of the woman who's missing, right? Uh, so I think it's very exciting that in this case, she's going to be the one trying to find him. Uh, I think it's a great idea. This is going to replace the Rick Grimes movie that they were going to do, and instead they're doing a limited series. So I think this would pull a lot of people back in. Uh, and I'm really happy, as some of you pointed out, for Denai Guerrera, uh, she's getting a lot of great work. She looks fabulous. That red shirt, that red top that she has on was a great choice. Uh, and I just feel like this is very exciting for her and it also diversifies her portfolio. Hey, Danny, she doesn't become just like only Marvel reliant. She has two big brands that she's working with. And so that's really wonderful for her career. So uh, Chris says it'll bring him back. Who here is going to watch The Walking Dead go back to it for this show? I don't even watch The Walking Dead. And I'm like, this looks pretty good. Lauren Cohan and Jeffrey Dean Morgan are getting a spinoff too. Everybody gets a spinoff. 
Oh, Isaac's like, not coming back. Wallflowers never watch. I've never watched. I tried to start. I watched the first episode of The Walking Dead when it first came out, and I was like, it's too gory for me. I really don't like gore, and I was like, it's just too gross. I think I was trying to eat my dinner at the time, and I was like, this is not my evening's entertainment. Thank you very much. Although some of you are still do ride or die. That's, very, that's great. Juan is still watching. Juan Rosas. I love your enthusiasm, Juan. That makes me feel very happy. And also, some of you are pointing out AMC Plus, where you get to watch the show a little bit early. I'm sure that they're like, this, they need it just for that alone. I mean, I'm sure that The Walking Dead and Early Access is driving a lot of subscribers to that service, so they need to continue to have shows. So that's going to keep The Walking Dead The Walking Dead for longer than maybe it should be. Josh says, I haven't watched The Walking Dead for eight years, but I would watch this pilot. That's fantastic. Barbie Minaj brought up Interview with a Vampire. You know, I just want to say, I watched that trailer, Grey Worm co-stars from uh, Game of Thrones, and I have to tell you, it actually looks quite good. I was like, oh, that looks excellent. And they did a really good job race-bending one of the characters, and I thought that it looked excellent. I was like, that could really be big, and that's also on AMC. So I think Interview with, an a Interview with the Vampire could be actually, uh, keep an eye on that. I suspect that could be like a real, especially with the LGBT community, um, who are very big on Twitter, uh, and, and also black Twitter. So if you combine them together, it could be just huge. I mean, I think, keep an eye on the interview with the vampire. I think that could be quite the show. I wouldn't be surprised if that becomes uh, a really big show. That's right, Black Cat. Zeester and Jerry gifted subs to people today. They gifted, um, uh, I think Jerry did like 50, uh, and Zister did 100. It was just so kind of both of them. Uh, all right, so on that note, let's go to the questions of the day. It is 6.02. You may ask me anything that you would like until 6.12, and then I shall do shout outs. Hey, Snivy Link. Peyton says, what are your thoughts on this year's Comic-Con overall? I thought, you know, it, I think a lot of people didn't expect Comic-Con to be a thing this year, and you can see that in the way things were handled. Uh, I thought that it was a little all over the place. I thought, like, for instance, they buried the John Wick trailer debut. I thought it was ridiculous the way they handled that. I couldn't even react to it. I'm like, I got to save space for the, uh, the Marvel stuff that's coming and the Warner Brothers stuff that's coming the next day. I just thought it was very poorly done, and people just didn't carve out enough space for themselves. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons made a good use of it, though. Alberta says, what did you think of the black phone? As I said, I watched it twice, two days in a row. Absolutely loved it. I thought it was extremely well done, and I thought it was really nice for Scott Derrickson, uh, showing that he still is very good and he's got what it takes. Um, and, you know, maybe they shouldn't have fired him off, off of Doctor Strange, too. Max says, what would you think about Amanda Seyfried for Sue Storm? I think she'd be wonderful for Sue Storm. I thought she was so good in the dropout. I think she showed a lot of nuance to her acting ability. Hey, Joseph. And I think she'd be a wonderful choice. I would love her, too, because I don't want them to have teenage Fantastic Four. I'm really nervous that the Fantastic Four and the X-Men are going to all be teenagers uh, and be in Spider-Man's world. That would make me barf. <laughs> Uh, oh, hey, Cedric. It's always so nice to see you. Uh, I always enjoy your comments, and that's very kind of you. Harlequin Dove says, I was thinking, aren't the X-Men being introduced to that animation show? Uh, well, that's not, I don't think that's MCU. I think that's just an actual continuation of the X-Men series from the 90s. Um, let's see here. Who asked me that? Uh, Will says, thoughts on the Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones new trailers? Uh, I thought they were medium. I think, you know, I'm really, I don't read the books on either of those, so it's really hard for me to be like, oh, look, look at the character they just showed. I didn't think there were enough dragons in the House of the Dragon trailer, and it's really hard for me to get excited about another woman who wants to be queen when I was really behind da Daenerys. I was like, I already did this, and it was a horrible disaster. Why should this lady be queen when the woman I wanted to be queen not only isn't queen, but got murdered? I mean, that was, and, and character assassinated. 
So that's really difficult for me to be at all into that. So that's hard. Also, I know it's, that's the problem with the prequel. I know she's not going to become queen because they said there has never been a woman on the Iron Throne before. So it's like, why are you wasting my time with that? Uh, Will, I just answered that. Oh, a lot of questions. And this is closed only to members. Imagine how fast the other one's going to go. Uh, let's see here. Binge God says, Grace, what Disney plus Marvel show are you looking forward to most? Ooh, I'll give you some secret invasion tea. Hey, Captain Marvel. All right, so I got some secret invasion tea today. I found out that most of the scrolls when we start out are, uh, are doing like uh, government officials and they are doing uh, like politicians and stuff like that. So that's kind of like, I'm, I can't find out if they're doing any heroes, but they're, you know, that's kind of like who they're taking over. Uh, I don't want to give everything away. I will also say that Olivia Coleman, let's just say she's Nick Fury's uh, European counterpart, which is such a great role for her. Uh, and she is actually based on a, Mar a Marvel comic book character and I believe is gender bent. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and then also, I will just tell you that whoever you think is a good scroll might be a bad scroll by the end of the show. Uh, my, and I, I was asking my source about this. I was like, what's the point of all this? Because we already have Avengers 5 and 6, and they ain't Secret Invasion. And my source guessed that maybe Secret Invasion would lead into the Marvels 2 or Marvels 3. That seems like really far away from me. My only concern is wasting the Secret Invasion storyline. That would make me sad because it's such a great story. Uh, who asked that? Do, 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 do. Mm. Joseph says, does Kamala have a lot of screen time in the Marvels? Uh, I don't know for sure, but I know she's definitely, a like, definitely the three of them are the main. Uh, like, although Monica, I hear that... Nia DaCosta really increased Monica's presence in the film, which I think is a very smart idea. So I'm excited about that. Uh, however, I do know that Kamala Khan's family shows up in, Ms. Mar in the Marvels. So if her family's there, there's probably going to be a decent amount of Kamala Khan. Uh, Josh says, when do you think we'll see Wanda next? I think there's a very good chance you'll see Wanda in Coven of Chaos. I don't see how you could have a Coven of Chaos and Wanda not be in it. Hey, Platinum Diva. That's so nice of you. I always love seeing you, Platinum Diva. I just wanted to say hi. Black Panther Wakanda Forever trailer is so good. Great breakdown in Angela Bassett. The right emojis for sure, Platinum Diva. Platinum Diva, you know, I get to know members of this community, some of you particularly well, and Platinum Diva is so such a great member of the community and always so upbeat and positive. It's just always so nice to hear from you. Let's see here. Elliot says, is Alfred Hitchcock's Rebecca the best way to start his filmography? I want to start watching his films to get ready for Rear Window. Oh, that's our watch along on Friday. Sure, in fact, Rebecca is on YouTube for free. Somebody uploaded the entire movie. It's great. And it's a really good copy. And I watched during the pandemic. I rewatched it. And it's just so good. It's a square because it's an old movie. So it doesn't utilize your whole screen. But you're going to really love it. I don't have any Ahsoka tea beyond, you know, like what already the trailer leaked from Star Wars Celebration. Oh, Mika says, what are your thoughts on the Marvel VFX article, you know, about how they're kind of overworked a little bit? Um, you know, I think that that's just kind of what's going on with the VFX community as a whole these days. Uh, they must have been really upset to leak it as an article, though. Um, I don't think it's that bad. Oh, thanks, Gavin. That's very kind of you. I don't think it's that bad to be honest with you. Uh, I do think the Thor VFX were not great, Danny. You know, I have some tea for you on that. I found out that the Thor fight scenes in Thor 4 was the first time that they used the stagecraft technology for a movie. And I think it needs some work. Uh, so I think they're experimenting with it. And um, it just, you know, I just don't think it worked out so well. In some parts, like when they went to Omnip Omnipotent City or whatever, I thought that was pretty good. 
uh, pork chop. What do you think of Westworld? I think Westworld is as good as it's ever been. It's better than it's ever been. I am I I actually get Westworld screeners as a member of the press, and I'm ahead of you by one episode. And I'm upset they won't give me more. I'm like, give me more episodes. It's just so good. If I think once people can binge Westworld season four, it might really take off because it's an amazing show. Let's see here. Oh, two more minutes. Oh, let's see here. Present Progressive says, do you think Kevin Feige shortened phase four after realizing that it hasn't been received very well? I sure do. I sure do. I think for sure he declared it over because of that. I think he's like, it's a new phase. It's a new day. Uh, Benz says, do you think we'll see any of the Avengers at T'Challa's funeral? Wouldn't it be super strange for none of them to show up? That's a great point. I think they could say that it's a closed funeral because I think Wakanda is a very private nation, has been established. Um, I feel bad for Ryan Coogler. I think he's in a difficult position because I've seen some people say that, you know, that, that Marvel is profiting off of his death. And I think that that, I don't think that's true, but I can understand the argument and it's just really bad. I think the optics are just bad no matter, I mean, damned if you do, damned if you don't. I don't really think there was a path forward for Ryan Coogler where he wouldn't have a difficult time. So I think all he can do is make the best movie possible, and I think it looks like he did that. Oh, look at Belle. Some people are realizing that they got gifted a subscription. That's so sweet. That's very nice of you, Belle. Smart Girl says, will quantum mania really change the phase four arguments? Well, let's see. I will say that quantum mania is super, super silly, and that Kang is not the big bad, MODOK is the big bad, and Kang is kind of like in the background. It's a very silly movie. Oh, thank you, Binge God. That's very nice. Welcome. I'm so glad that you're a member. Breno just graduated from film school in Brazil and got an A on his paper. You were a great inspiration to me these last few years. Oh, I'm so honored. Congrats. Congrats on graduating and your A. Who was playing Modoc? I don't want to spoil that. That's just too much of a blatant spoiler, although it is online and very easy to find. Let's see here. It's a weird choice. <laughs> I'm in the middle of writing my Super Pets review. Um, uh, I got home late yesterday from the screening, so I, was, I, didn't get, I didn't get started today when I should have. It's, it's my bad. Um, I'm only human. Uh, but I'm actually writing it out and I'm hoping to get that. And that and Harley Quinn will definitely go up tomorrow. I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about my She-Hulk trailer breakdown, but it will go up this week. I'll get to it, Glalie Master, I promise. I do think that Kevin Feige has, like, too much to do. Like, as some of you are pointing out, weren't we assembling the Young Avengers? Who knows? You know, I mean, like, I know, I mean, I told you they were coming. They've certainly put all the breadcrumbs out there. But, like, when's that going to happen? Oh, hey, Keith, that was very kind of you to do that. How big of a role will Hulk Bruce have in She-Hulk? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I, that I don't know for sure. I should be getting those uh, screeners pretty soon. Uh, it seems to me from the, from the trailer that maybe he's just like in the beginning, you know, with her training montage. Uh, but I mean, look, she has a lot of cool guest stars. Daredevil's going to show up. That's going to be very exciting. In his red and yellow suit. Red and yellow, red and yellow. That's like uh, black and yellow for the Steelers. Devin, I haven't heard anything about ca recasting Electra, but I would not be surprised. Ivan, Blackbird on Apple TV is incredible. I thought that the last episode was a little bit of a holdover episode and was not as good as it could have been, um, but I still en enjoyed it. I mean, it was a little bit of a filler. I was like, so we're really just going to talk this whole episode? And they were like, that's right, we are. And I was like, mm, okay. I mean, it's uh, Paul Walter Hauser and Taryn Edgerton, so it's still excellent. I highly recommend that show. I think it's very, very good. Oh, thank you, Tina. Oh, that little sticker is so cute. Look at him do his little dance. Boop, 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 boop. He's booping away. Uh, Nicholas, I'd love to see Brandon Perea cast as anything. He is Angel at Nope. I think he's super talented. I was surprised how few Twitter followers he had. I would have thought more people would have followed him. Maybe he's blowing up on Instagram and TikTok if he's on, if he's on those two.
Trisha, I mean, I'm con- I'm not a big Percy Jackson fan, but I- I'm curious to see. If- I think I told you I think they skewed it too young. I would have aged up those characters. I know a lot of people are like purists and are like, no, he needs to be really little. And I'm like, but that limits your audience. I mean, I guess everybody watched Stranger Things, but they had you know David Harbor and they had Winona Ryder, and I think that helped a lot. Um, but we'll see. There should be adult gods. Uh, in Percy Jackson. So let's see how it comes together. I mean, it just seems to me right now that it's skewing very young. Trisha, I don't know who's on the Thunderbolts. I just know that Val is, well, I know she assembles them and I think it's pretty clear she assembles them from the way things have been going. So anyone Val's talking to is probably a Thunderbolt. Would Would US agent really level up to a movie? That would be incredible. Oh, oh, should I tell you some tea? Okay, all right, Tenerife. I can't confirm this, but I do know that there was some discussion that Red Hulk could maybe be in Captain America 4, but that was like early days of development. So I don't know for sure if they stuck with that, especially considering William Hurt passed away. But I heard that. That would be great. That movie would, that would really help that movie in terms of like, like a big deal, like making it exciting in terms of like action sequences. Fatima says, Tom Cruise going to the MCU. I still feel he's probably in the MCU. I got to tell you, he took a mysterious break while making the Mission Impossible movies to go to Atlanta. So, and they, and they admitted that they talked, they were considering him for Dr. Uh, Dr. Strange too. Michael Waldron admitted it. Um, and I, I know for sure he was talking to them because I know some sources who know, who said Tom Cruise's camp was having those conversations. Um, but let's see how it worked out. Barbie Minaj says, is the Marvels really a musical? Oh, you guys, it's getting spoilery. It's getting spoilery. I can't, I'm not going to, I can't spoil it. You don't want to know the whole movie, right? I mean, think about how that went for No Way Home. You don't want to watch a movie just thinking and checking boxes, right? But I will say that there is a member of the cast who is a singer, a K-pop singer. So if they were to make a movie a musical, that would be very smart as to how to utilize that person. Uh, I don't know how Bullet Train's going to do. It looks fun to me. I mean, I, uh, the press screening is uh, next week. Oh, hey, Regan. I'm so glad to have live streams back as well. Where are you, in Australia? Oh, it's morning. Oh, I love that. I love seeing where you guys are across the globe. All right, I went way past where I was supposed to. Because <laughs> I was having so much fun talking to you. All right. Um, so, everybody... Thank you very much. Let me do some shout outs. What are you up to? Just tell me, uh, just t- give me something to interact with. What are you eating? What have you done today? Where are you? Just so I can be like, oh, hey. Carrie is having a sandwich and a shake in Chicago. Uh, uh, Carrie, I lo- Carrie, I love your smile. I love when you have your own pictures as your, thing, your, uh, your avatar so I can see you. Uh, let's see here. Jerry says it's uh, 103 at 5 p.m. PM, so my evening trail run will be a hike. Oh, make sure you stay hydrated, Jerry. Protect yourself. Be careful. Sir Charles, meanwhile, is in his, uh, his air-conditioned bedroom for today's live stream. Let's see here. Uh, Regan is getting ready for studies. Josh is drinking iced coffee and watching his girl Grace. Ah, that's so sweet, Josh. Aiden is having a double feature with Infinity War and Endgame and a steak sub. Oh, I love it. Platinum Diva says, hey, Grace, I am on a balcony in North Carolina on vacation with a glass of wine and fruit. Oh, I love it. I love that you're staying healthy on vacation, and I love that you're treating yourself, and I'm glad to be a part of your vacation. I hope you're having a great time. Let's see here. Black Cat says, I've been, to, I've been to the cinema and watched Lightyear and then watched your spoiler review, and I couldn't agree more. Oh, that makes me so happy. I'm so glad. I still feel so bad I didn't do a Jurassic World Dominion spoiler review. Never again. Uh, Wanda the Witch says, on the train back from acting school in New York City. Ah, good for you. Good for you. You're doing the grind. Keep it up. 
Uh, ben says, eating popcorn and watching Doctor Strange 2 and Hungry. Oh, a lot of you. Are you all tuned into Disney Plus? Let's see here. Nicholas said, just started my second semester on media and animation. Time to start working again. Oh, that's exciting. Oh, that's so great. Barbie Minaj says, hey, Grace, eating pizza in Ohio. By the way, my stepdad and I, stepdad and I finished Severance, and you were right. It was incredible. That's right. All the mind-blown emojis. And Barbie, that was so great. Your stepdad watched it again with you, and I'm so glad you had a good time. Juan Hernandez is going to see Nope tonight in IMAX. Oh, you're going to have a great time. Have fun. Danny O says, in Chicago, struggling to get through severance. Ah, uh, sorry, Dan. I mean, uh, Ms. Marvel. Sorry, Danny. Uh, it's good. I, I think, you know, just keep with it. I think it has some really interesting episodes. Paul says, eating sushi in Florida, extra wasabi. I like that. Let's see here. Uh... Just saw someone, uh, Wallflower says, I'm in Argentina getting ready for an algebra final. Ah, uh, good luck to you. Break a leg. And Zara says, hi, Grace. Finished work and about to study for uni. Sending you love and support from Dubai. I love having everybody all over the, uh, all over the globe. And I don't care, Bear, and this is in London, working late on the color grading of my new film. Oh, that's exciting. Jerome's also in London, enjoying the live stream and the community. Ah, oh, that's so nice, Jerome. I'm glad. You guys are the best. You get such a great community. Let's see here. Keith says, having a London fog tea on a difficult day, but this definitely cheered me up. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Keith. You know, you know things will get better. You just got to keep going. You just can't get weighed down. That's what's really important. Peyton also says, just got off work in Lower Alabama, about to go to the beach, then watch X-Men, the animated series tonight. What a fun day. You're having a good summer. Oh, and look, and, uh, Tenerife is in uh, Indonesia at 5 a.m. Ah, oh, that's so nice of you. Watching half asleep because someone decided to gift me a membership today. Thanks for staying up, Tenerife. Uh, tomorrow's stream will be in the morning, so it should maybe be a little bit better time for you. Uh, look at Bell Trailer saying all the Chicago BTT peeps. That's great. Denzel O'Neill says, cook some spaghetti and meatballs while I watch the stream. Happy to keep you company. Sandra says, ready to get to bed past midnight here in the Netherlands. Ah, uh, so we're like a story tape. That's great. Uh, let's see here. And Freedom Tompkins says, been watching Pretty Little Liars because of the new spinoff that's coming out. That's right. That's right. That's this week. And Smart Girl says, heck yeah, Chicago in the house. Ah, oh, you guys are the nicest. You guys are so nice. All right. And Pelly says, going for a walk after dinner. Uh, and Keith is wearing his BTT hoodie. Oh, you guys are so great. All right, I'm going to get going. I'm going to get back to, to work on the other content. Tomorrow's live stream will be a morning stream, sometime around 10 o'clock. Um, and then Thursday will be the super stream, where anyone can comment, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, we're just going to try it. We're just going to try it. All right, everybody, thank you so much. I had a wonderful time with everybody today. Thank you to everybody who tuned in, and thank you to everybody who's a member. I really love getting to know you. And thanks again to Jerry and Zister for gifting all those memberships. That was just so kind of them. All right, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.